ProLin PLN. Hello, my name is Ben Weisenberger. I'm an application engineer with ProLin PLM, and I want to welcome you to today's video uh, where we'll be taking a look at what's new in Solid Edge 2019, part one. Uh, in this part, we'll mainly be focusing on taking a look at um, core Solid Edge and what has changed inside of the, the Solid Edge application. In part two, we'll be taking a look at um, some of the uh, additional add in products that have been added to the Solid Edge portfolio, including Solid Edge Electrical. Um, and, and some other tools as well. So to begin with, with today's video, we'll be taking a look at, um, again, some things inside of the application that have changed, uh, including the name. Um, we'll also look at some other display enhancements that have been added in the part environment. We'll take a look at some enhancements that were done to generative design and reverse engineering, as well as some sweet new uh, capability to the intersect surfacing command. Um, Additional functi functionality has also been added into mesh modeling, as well as a feature for design for cost and an enhancement to the slot command as well, which has been uh, asked for for quite a while now. In the assembly environment, we'll also look at some new adjustable tubes, uh, an auto simplify command, and then uh, a couple new options in the draft environment as well. So to start with right away, um, you should have noticed the Solid Edge name has changed. Uh, we've gone away from the ST uh, naming convention for Solid Edge and went to Solid Edge 2019. So we switched to the, the year naming convention. Um, so this way it just makes it easier to identify what product you're using uh, as well as all the products inside of the Solid Edge portfolio. So for instance you'll see Solid Edge Illustrations 2019 instead of just Solid Edge Illustrations. Um, some other changes that you'll see instead of the versioning numbers being 109, 110, etc., it'll now be 219, 220, 221, etc. Um, also, I know the year is 2018, um, but the version is called 2019 because that is when it will primarily be used, is in the next year. Um, just like uh, when cars come out, normally the, the year of the car is the, the year in advance. Um, so just keep that in mind. Some other things that have changed as well is the install location. It's now installed in C program files, Siemens, and then Solid Edge 2019. Also, uh, some other things that have changed is like the app data location, where any customizations that you've created are saved to your uh, user interface or radio menu, anything like that. That's now out in a roaming Siemens folder, Solid Edge version 219. Some display enhancements that were uh, made in Solid Edge 2019 in the assembly environment. Um, we can now match the graphic and pathfinder colors, just meaning whatever color the part highlights in the model, it'll also highlight that same color in the pathfinder. And whatever color you have set to the selected option, when you actually click on a part in the assembly, it'll highlight that same color in the pathfinder as well. So you may see some things highlighting as green now in the pathfinder. Um, in the past, I believe everything just highlighted as orange. So uh, just keep that in mind, a nice little enhancement. You may not notice it a whole lot, but it should uh, clear up some confusion and make it easier to see what you're highlighting and what you're actually selecting. Some enhancements were done in the generative design aspect of Solid Edge as well. Uh, we can now have multiple studies listed in the generative design pane. The active study will actually be displayed as bold and blue, as you can see in the picture on the right, and all of the children that are active in that study are displayed as bold as well. We have some other options where we can double click to make uh, the study active. Uh, we can do things like duplicate loads using control and drag, expand all, collapse all, show only, just like you would do in, in any other aspect of Solid Edge. We've added a gravity load now to generative design as well. This is only going to be available with the Pro license. This can be added as a global load. It can be defined in any one of the component directions as well. We also now have a displacement constraint. Again, this is only available with the Pro license. This can be used uh, on faces that we want to move in a certain distance or direction before the load starts deforming the body. Uh, a fixed constraint is also a displacement constraint with zero displacement. It works exactly like the fixed constraint, but with the ability to specify an allowable displacement. Um, again, this can also be seen over in the generative design pane in a constraints node with the displacement number next to it, just like you'd see fixed uh, or anything like that. 
We can now create load cases as well. So this can be used to optimize parts for various usage scenarios. Maybe a part will be pulled up or pushed down, things like that. So we can easily create as many load cases as we want. We can reorder them simply by dragging and dropping. We can share loads and constraints between the different load cases. Uh, they can also be, again, easily duplicated with a right mouse click or control and drag. When you run the generate study command, you now have the option to reduce the mass based on the factor of safety. So you can use this to specify that the mass be reduced to meet a specific factor of safety in your model. And obviously then you can see in the picture below how this affects the results uh, of the generative study. We have some new settings available to us in the manufacturing settings uh, of generative design. Again, this is only going to be available with the Pro license, but we have some settings to generate optimized parts suitable for traditional manufacturing methods like subtractive manufacturing. Um, so we can generate shapes that are going to only be extruded in a specific direction. And again, this makes it easier to, in some cases, even 3D print it, but also allow us to now go back to the traditional subtractive manufacturing methods uh, to manufacture these parts. So a lot of really good options here that we'll see in an example. Another option that we have is material spread inside of the manufacturing settings. This allows us to change between hollowed out type structures, thin walled structures, or strut light structures, and we can change uh, how these supports are generated with our generative design studies. In this example, we're going to take a look at some of the new options inside of generative design. So to start with, we'll open up an example here. And over on the left, we can see in the generative design tab some of the new colors that uh, just help kind of make the different active studies stand out um, and show you the constraints and loads that are associative to the different studies. So we can see some of the new things highlighted in blue and some other bold fonts over on the left as well. Um, and what we want to do, if we go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the study we've already created here, we can see that here's our finished model and we can obviously turn on the stresses as we could in the past. Now, with this example here, what we did is we placed separate forces in, and fixed constraints on the model that kind of counteract each other. We have some forces going up, some forces going down, and since they're all created at the same time, they sort of cancel each other out. What we want to be able to do, though, is actually see those separate forces, how they affect the model, and then create a, a generative design that will uh, be able to withstand the forces in the opposite directions. So what's new then in 2019 is to be able to create separate load cases. Just to point some other things out before we create a separate load case is we also have new loads for gravity and there is a new displacement constraint as well. So as this starts to mature we'll be adding more of those uh, commands and constraints into the uh, generative design. So let's go ahead and create a, another load case here. And with the second load case, what we're going to do is just come up here and simply grab the existing forces that we've applied and add them down in there to that second load case. So we'll put them all down in the load case two. And if we go back into load case one, we can then remove them from that first load case. So now we have two separate load cases. Again, one of them has the forces pushing up on the model. The other one has the forces pushing down. Um, we also have different fixed constraints here, whether it's the top uh, cylinder over on the right or the bottom cylinder on the right. So now we'll be able to do an analysis on each separate case, mix them together, and get a finalized result. So if we go in and hit generate, we should be able to end up with a new model. And here we can see the finished generative model. Uh, obviously it looks quite a bit different. We have some additional material here inside of our two cylinders over on the right. Um, stresses are still kind of in the same general area, but uh, pretty cool that we can now go in and create these separate load cases and get kind of a mixed completed model uh, to take a look at, at the generative design there. So let's go ahead and take a look at another example then, uh, some of the new options with material extrusion. In this example, we're going to take a look at some of the new material extrusion options for generative design. So we'll go ahead and get another example open here. And we already have a study set up for us, but what we're going to do is go in and apply some new constraints to this. Uh, so I'm going to add in a force over here on the right hand face. And we'll just flip the direction of that. We're also going to add in a couple fixed constraints inside of the holes here. And we'll just stick with the defaults for these for now. 
Now what we want to look at that's new is in the manufacturing settings. So inside of here, this should look a little bit different than ST10. In 2019, what we have the option to do is pick the direction that we want to do the material extrusion in. So I want to go in the Y direction, both positive and negative, from where the base coordinate system is. We also want to prevent overhang in the Y direction as well. So this is really going to allow us to do the traditional sort of manufacturing, subtractive type manufacturing, um, instead of just the additive manufacturing that we first saw uh, with generative design in ST10. So if we click OK on that, I'll just turn on the base coordinate system real quick so you can see where that's located and which direction the Y axis is pointing. So we want to go both positive and negative, both directions, and we also want to make sure there's no overhangs in that direction as well. So now we can go in and actually generate this. And I'm going to set my quality a little bit higher, up to about a 10, and we want to reduce the mass by about 40%. And uh, we'll go ahead and hit generate and see what we come up with. So we can see here uh, our results. And obviously this is a, a much easier model to then actually manufacture and create, again, using traditional subtractive manufacturing methods. So these are some of the new options here in Solid Edge 2019. Being able to generate, again, a more traditional type model instead of that organic looking uh, additive type models that we've been getting starting in ST10 with generative design. Um, next, we're going to take a look at some of the material spread options that were added as well in Solid Edge 2019. So we'll open up another example here, and we already have the study created, but let's go ahead and add our loads and constraints to this block and just take a look at kind of the default settings to begin with. So the first thing we're going to do is add a force to the top face up here, and I'm going to do an offset of about 4 millimeters down into the block with that force. We'll also fix the bottom face of the block, again doing a 4 millimeter offset. And we want to preserve the region, the hole on the inside of the block, so we'll add that in there with an offset of 2 millimeters. Let's go ahead and generate this to see what it looks like to begin with. So I'm going to adjust our quality up to about a 10, and we want to reduce the mass by about 50, or 60%, excuse me. We'll go ahead and generate that and take a look at what that looks like. So here are the results. We can see kind of what that looks like. And if you've ever done the generative design in SC10, you're probably familiar with the result here. So we have kind of two larger supports that go up and spread out into four smaller areas on each side. Uh, again, pretty basic. That's what we saw a lot back in Solid Edge ST10. But now what we can do is we can adjust how it creates these support structures. We can do that through the manufacturing settings and do the material spread. By default, no effect. Again, that's the ST10 behavior. But we can start to increase the slider here and go up to things like the hollowed out solids, make it act more like a thin wall structure, or we want to have kind of individual little strut light structures to support our material. So we're going to slide that all the way up, click OK, and generate this one more time using the same settings. And there we go, now we can see our results. So instead of having the two larger support structure, they're broken out more into strut light structures. Um, spreading out kind of the material and also the, the supports between the two faces. So again, that's one of the new options here in Solid Edge 2019 is to be able to adjust the material spread and adjust our kind of finished results here for generative design. Some enhancements were also made to the reverse engineering aspect of Solid Edge 2019. There's a new command to help us smooth out any imported mesh geometry. So this is going to help on any scanning artifacts and imperfections in a faceted body. If you guys are using like a 3D scanner or something like that, bring in that data and we can clean it up and make it a little bit smoother. So we'll look at an example of this here in just a minute. We also increased the performance of the reverse engineering aspect. This took a little bit of time, maybe back in ST10. Uh, on average, some things took two, three minutes can now take less than three seconds here inside of Solid Edge 2019. Um, so some really good performance enhancements here in Solid Edge 2019 to help speed up the process of reverse engineering. To go along with this, we've also enhanced the intersect command. This is not only for reverse engineering, this is really for all surfacing, uh, but this is going to be probably most beneficial in that reverse engineering aspect. 
There are some new auto trim options um, where you can also do create design bodies or go back and do the old manual trim extend. Uh, but the auto trim option is really nice. You'll be able to, be able to select uh, a group of surfaces and have it automatically determine what, uh, what aspects of the surfaces should be deleted or removed. And we'll take a look at a couple different examples of that. We also have a new aspect of the intersect command called create design bodies. So if you have surfaces that intersect each other and you're trying to basically trim and then stitch together, it does this all together in one process. So it really speeds that up and makes it a lot quicker. Now there are some options with this command where you can go in and pick you know what body you want it to create. Maybe it has the chance to create multiple bodies. You can have it try to union those bodies together. Uh, all the types of, of good options that we have here with the create design bodies option. So you can see here in the volume regions dialog that pops up when you run that create bodies option. You get to see those different regions, the different bodies. You can uncheck some if you wanted to remove them and only create the, the specific bodies that you actually need. Um, or you could basically deselect everything and only have one selected, whatever you want. Uh, again, some good options. You have the Unite Regions options at the bottom of the dialog and also options to consume the surfaces so they're no longer listed uh, inside of the Pathfinder, which helps shorten that up. And then there is also an option to invert which direction you want it to go. Do you want it to add the regions to the outside or inside? And that invert also works on just the auto trim command as well. Uh, which direction of the surfaces do you want to trim away and which ones do you want to keep? So then here is uh, what the consume surfaces looks like um, and also the unite regions. If we have them both turned on, we get the option on the left. Uh, the left picture here where we see we only have one design body and there are no more surfaces listed in the Pathfinder. If we have them turned off, I have multiple design bodies listed and we still see some surfaces and things like that uh, listed in the Pathfinder as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this inside of Solid Edge 2019. So in this example, we're going to take a look at the new Smooth Mesh option in Solid Edge 2019. Uh, so we're going to open up actually an STL file here, and we're just going to bring that into an ISO part environment. And when we get that open, we're going to go ahead and hide the base coordinate system and fit our screen so we can go ahead and take a look at the uh, geometry. And obviously we can see it's a, a little bit dirty. It's not super smooth. Um, and what we want to do is go ahead and actually try to smooth some of this out. So I'm going to start by uh, switching over to the reverse engineering tab and running the smooth mesh command. And when the command starts, we have a couple options that we can do. We have a couple different selection methods. Do we just want to select a couple facets, a specific area, or do we want to do the entire mesh? And we're going to start just by doing the mesh facets. And then you have a smoothing factor. Um, this is basically a percentage of how far the facets can move. Uh, we'll stick around 80 or so. And then your number of iterations here, how many times do you want it to go through uh, this process before it finds you know, the smoothest solution? You can crank that up if you want it to be more accurate or decrease it to help decrease the time a little bit. And then all we're going to do for the mesh facets option is just come in here and fence select some of the geometry and hit accept and it'll go through and again try to smooth out that geometry and just like that we see that it's a lot smoother right here in this area. Let's go ahead and try to do the uh, same process to the entire model. So I'm going to switch the option to mesh, select the entire part, hit accept, and this does work pretty quickly here. I should go through and smooth out the entire model, and there we go. Now, obviously, there's still some other little holes in the part, um, but this does a really good job of smoothing that out and getting us uh, closer to kind of that reverse engineering process to uh, creating a, an entire model from this mesh body. In this example, we're going to take a look at the auto trim option that is now available on the intersect surfacing command. So we've got a couple different examples to take a look at. Um, to start with, I just want to open up a nice basic one here where you can obviously see that we have some surfaces extending past each other. What we want to do is trim off all of the kind of little excess pieces that hang over each other. And in the past to do this, we could use like the intersect command, but we'd have to go in and then uh, click each individual piece of the surface we wanted to delete, and that would just take uh, quite a bit of time. So now what we can do is go through the intersect command, um, and we have a new drop-down option here that allows us to pick either what we used to do in the past, the manual trim extend, or we have two new options where we can create design bodies or do the auto trim. And we want to do auto trim on this example here, so we'll pick auto trim. 
and in this sample we'll just fence select every single one of those services, hit accept, and just like that it automatically trims away all of the overhang and excess services that we don't need. Now if this is maybe not the direction we wanted to trim, maybe we want to go in and get rid of all the other pieces of the surfaces and leave the overhang, we can easily toggle that option to uh, again save kind of the overhang parts but get rid of the rest of the surfaces. So really nice and easy option here to auto trim that and there we go. Uh, if we take a look at another example here, we have kind of maybe a, another little kind of staircase example here of surfaces overlapping. We've got to trim these up. We can quickly go back through intersect, make sure we're on the auto trim option, fence select everything on the screen here, and there we go. It trimmed all of those up as well. And another example, we're going to take a look at the create design bodies option. And I've actually have a couple examples we can do this on. If we start with this one, we can do both the auto trim and the create design body on this one because it is a closed in uh, surface or a closed in body here. So what we're going to do is run the intersect command one more time. We'll choose auto trim. I want to show you this method first, then we'll do the create design body. So with auto trim, I can come in here and trim it just like we did before, and we get left with kind of that internal box that we wanted, or we could flip to the outside surfaces, but obviously we want the insides. And then you have the option here on the command bar to actually also stitch those surfaces together. So you don't have to try to do that later on. Uh, we can do it right now here in the command, hit accept. It stitched it all into one solid body. It leaves it initially as a construction body, but I can easily right click, toggle that to design, and there we go, we have a solid model. Now let me undo that and let's do the intersect command one more time and this time let's choose the create design bodies option. So now when I fence select this model and accept it, it'll try to uh, again trim away all of the excess, excess surfaces and leave, a, leave us excuse me, just with the design body. At the bottom of the window that pops up then we have options to consume all those surfaces so they're no longer in the pathfinder. Uh, if there are multiple bodies here we can try to unite them together. So we'll turn both those on for now, hit accept, and there we go. All we have then is our one solid body. Let's take a look at that create design body on one more example. So here again we just have a, a part with a lot of surfaces, maybe this is an imported model, something like that, and we want to go in and clean this up and make a solid model from it. In the past this could take quite a bit of time to do, but now with the uh, create design body option, again I can just fence select this, hit accept, and it gives me a list then of all the regions that it's going to try to create. And I can go in here and I can deselect these one at a time, or I can just go graphically select them from the part. So I want to get rid of that, I want to cut that through. Same thing with these, I want some holes over here in the part, and I'm just clicking to deselect those regions. Maybe there's some little mounting holes in the center of these uh, bosses or these cylinders. We can deselect those as well. I want to consume all these surfaces because we do have quite a big list over here in the Pathfinder, so I want to get rid of all of those. And I just want to make sure everything's united and uh, kind of combined into one solid model. Once we have that, we'll just right click to accept it. And there we go. We can then um, make that design body active by double clicking it. And we can see now we have our solid model. So a really quick and easy command to use. It definitely helps speed up this process uh, of taking those surfaces that you may have gotten from reverse engineering or you imported a model. We can easily uh, stitch those together. We can trim them and we can make a solid design body from it. So some really nice options there with the intersect command here in Solid Edge 2019. With mesh models, we now have analytic recognition. So this is going to allow us to tag mesh geometry with different information based on the, the analytics of the geometry itself. So the underlying geometry of a mesh when it's known will automatically tag it, and that can be used uh, more like a classic BREP model. So some things we can do um, is we can start to use the steering wheel a little bit uh, in the synchronous environment. The axes and planes or faces can also start to be used in part in assembly environments. So let me go ahead and show you some of the stuff that we can do with it. This is going to enable us to do some new modeling capabilities, and it's also going to impact some future projects that will be coming. But the tagged faces we can use that as uh, relationships in a part or an assembly. So if you do face relationships in a part environment or assembly relationships to do like an axial line of a bolt or something like that, we can now do that just by bringing in the mesh model and uh, constraining it in the assembly. 
We can also move geometry on a mesh body. Um, in ST10, when we started that convergent modeling inside of Solid Edge, all you could really do is move the entire mesh body. Now we can actually go in and grab specific geometric features in the mesh body and start to move them with the steering wheel. We can snap to faces or edges or axes. Um, we can rotate faces. So some really, really awesome stuff now. A lot more flexibility to be able to use that mesh geometry and make changes to it uh, with synchronous in the steering wheel. There are also capabilities to delete parts of mesh bodies. So we can delete rounds or chamfers if we need to. We can also reuse geometry. Cut, copy, and paste will now work with mesh bodies. So I can cut a feature or copy a feature and place it somewhere else. You can even stitch mesh surfaces if you want to. So this is useful on imported files. Uh, sometimes you'll have little holes or artifacts in there that you need to close up. You can now use the bounded surface command to go in and close up those surfaces uh, and create then maybe a solid model. So let's take a look at some examples here. In this next example, we're going to take a look at the new mesh modeling capabilities inside of Solid Edge 2019. So we have a model here that was actually converted from a Solid Edge file, and we converted it into a mesh uh, file here. Um, this is going to work best on that type of geometry, something that was maybe existing BREP geometry in the past that was then converted to mesh. And, and what we can do now is we can start to do some synchronous edits on this. So if I want to, I can come over here and fence select the box. And then using the steering wheel, I can push or pull that, move it somewhere else on the model. Um, I could also come in here and maybe fence select one of these cylinders, move the steering wheel down to the bottom face of it, and then even make a copy of that, bring it somewhere else on the face, and place that. And then if I needed to, I could go in and move that around uh, somewhere else onto the model. What we could also do maybe is come over here and rotate this face, and we put the steering wheel down to the bottom edge, and we can change the angle of that. You also have the capability to delete features like rounds or chamfers. So I could grab these end faces over here and simply just hit delete on the keyboard. And it's pretty cool that, again, this is a mesh model, but it's going in and solving that and getting rid of those rounds. And one of the other commands that works is the replace face command. So I might come in here and draw some sort of a curve that we can then make maybe a surface off of. So I'll extrude a surface off of that. And then we'll go in, use the replace face command and replace the end face of the mesh body with the surface we just created. And there we go. So some really great functionality here now, being able to do some synchronous edits on these mesh type bodies. Uh, and again, just start to make some of these really cool changes. So that's the new uh, mesh body option here inside of Solid Edge 2019. In the sheet metal environment, a new design for cost pane has been added that allows us to figure out the cost based on material and manufacturing options. So material based costs would be things like minimum sheet size, mass, volume, surface area, and manufacturing option or operation based costs is based on things like bends, cuts, stamps, etc. There are options for uh, additional user input if you'd like as well, but uh, this is a pretty cool option that was added here in Solid Edge 2019. So it allows you to, again, estimate relative costs of manufacturing. Then you can go in and optimize the models using that cost estimate and then communicate those design implications across the teams. So let's take a look at design for cost. In this example, we're going to take a look at the new design for cost capabilities inside of Solid Edge 2019. And for this example, what I will actually want to do is import a step file, and this is a sheet metal document, so I'll bring that into an ISO sheet metal template. And I just want to show you that in the Pathfinder, we don't have any features created in here, uh, but what I can do is go in and run the thin part to sheet metal and use that to recognize all of the, the flanges and features. And then even with that, we can come in here and do some of the costing measures. So I already have some of the values inputted in here. Um, and once we did the thin part to sheet metal, we can then analyze the model and it shows us our total number of bends, our cut lengths, any stamping uh, features that we'd have to create, anything like that. And all we have to do then is go in and input our costs. So maybe it's $5 to do a bend, something like that. We can start to input some of these costs 
and we can see then we get a nice cost estimate down at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, we get a, a nice pie graph showing you know what's going to cost the most. So maybe we need to go in and remove some of the cutouts or remove some of the bends to help reduce the cost of this model. So some really nice capability with the design for cost, and it even works on some of our imported type geometry that we might be working with. In previous versions of Solid Edge, the slot command was available in both synchronous and ordered environments, as well as sheet metal and parts. It was path-driven, but we could only do a single occurrence feature. That means we could only place one slot at a time, and you had to re-invoke the command every time you wanted another slot occurrence. You had options to recess or raise the counterbore and do an arc or flat end, and it was able to be patterned and mirrored. But this has been enhancement, enhanced in Solid Edge 2019 to allow us to create a multi-slot feature. This is one of the most requested enhancements uh, of the last couple of Solid Edge University event, events. We can now create multiple occurrence features. So you have the ability to place multiple slot occurrences of the same parameters at the same time. The slots are going to be added to a feature collector in Synchronous, like the whole command. It is limited to a single plane, however. Uh, all occurrences that are placed together will have the same counterbore conditions, end conditions, diameters, width, depth, and directions. The key differences between synchronous and ordered is the selection. In synchronous, you can select the sketch elements on a single plane. Ordered, you select or place a plane and then place sketch elements or select scale, sketch elements on a single plane using the select from sketch option. And the collector and pathfinder synchronous is added to a collector feature. And Pathfinder, and then in order, the slots are all contained within one feature inside of Pathfinder. To move them in synchronous, we can move the occurrence synchronously using the steering wheel. In ordered, we have to edit the profile or the sketch. And some other options, we now have a new more slots button like you have with the whole command. We can mirror and pattern of the multiple occurrences, detach and attach, separate them, copy paste them, move it to synchronous if you place them in the ordered environment. Uh, we can also handle legacy, legacy slots and update them to the, the future slot command just by editing them. This also works with assembly relationships and assembly patterns. So let's take a look at an example. In this example, we're going to take a look at the new multi-slot capability uh, of the slot command here in Solid Edge 2019. So we have a couple examples that I want to open up here. We have uh, two different bodies in this model. Uh, there are different heights here, but I just want to go in and start to create some slots on them and show you how this kind of new capability works. So we can go in and run the slot command. Just like before, I can go in and edit some of the options. Uh, maybe I want this to be about six millimeters wide. We're going to do an arc end, um, and we'll just click OK for now. Just to show you, I could hover over any of these sketch lines in the green part, or I can come over hover over the ones in the blue part, doesn't matter. I can easily come in here and select uh, the lines on the different planes and, and create the slots however I want. Now, once I select one of the lines over here on the blue part, I'm not able to go over and select any of the ones on the green one. So they do all have to be on the same plane once you start to select uh, some of the sketch lines to be used for the slot features. But once I've got that selected, I can easily go in now and just continue to select other sketch lines that I want to create the slots on. So we can do kind of that V shape. We can do the short dash here. Um, I can even select kind of this upside down U shape as well. So really easy just to go on and continue to select those and make any sort of changes that we want to. So let's go ahead and accept that and create the feature. And then if I wanted to, I could come in and grab that and use the steering wheel to maybe push or pull that slot, move it up or down. Um, if we want to, we can also come over here in the Pathfinder and separate that out so it's its own separate feature. So right now that separate dash line is its own separate, or excuse me, it's grouped with the other slots. This is the new capability. All these are grouped together under the same slot drop down in the Pathfinder, which means they all share the same attributes. They're all going to be the same size. But what I can do is right click on one of those and just like I could do with the whole command, I can separate that out. Now it's under its own whole, or excuse me, slot drop down that has its own uh, size and, and uh, other parameters that I can control separately from all the other existing slots. What I can also do then is actually edit into that slot and there's an edit profile option that will allow me to change the size of it. So that's really nice here in the synchronous environment uh, to be able to go in and kind of adjust that sketch, maybe make it a little bit longer, maybe make it a little bit shorter, whatever I want to do, close out of the sketch and now the slot has updated. So some really great capabilities there kind of built into the slot command here inside of the synchronous environment. 
Um, I can go on and add some more slots. Maybe I want to actually edit into one of the existing ones and use the new more slots command up here as well, just like we have in the whole environment. So now I can go on and continue to select lines. Now you'll notice initially when I select this shape here, it doesn't go the entire length of the sketch. That's because it would create a disjoint uh, model here. We don't want to do that. We don't want to have that separate body floating in the middle. But if you really needed to, you could. You could go on and grab it. Um, we can also come in here and grab different parts of this H kind of sketch over here and just want to show you some of the intersections and what they look like as we create those slots. Uh, if I select this last line over here, obviously we cut off the end of the part, not a big deal there. And then just to show you if you did pick up this one here, you're going to get kind of the warning that not all the slots can be created. Obviously it's not cutting any material. So if we needed to, we could deselect it by holding down shift and clicking the line again. And then there we go, we've got some of our slots created. So pretty easy to do. Um, if we want to, we can also do some of this in the ordered environment. So if we go ahead and transition into ordered, we should be able to come over here and using the same slot command, select some of the lines over on the left. So I'm going to switch my option to select from sketch and then go in here and pick up each one of these lines. Cut those down through. And there's our slot. I can easily then select the slot edit the profile, go back in, make a change to this, whatever I want to do. Um, if I wanted to, I could go back and actually select these as different features. So let me come back here into ordered and get rid of that one. And let's do it as separate slots. So I'm going to pick one of them, accept it and cut it through. Hit finish, pick the next line, accept it, cut it through and so on. So I could continue to just keep going with the slot command create different slot cutouts. So that is the new slot capability inside of Solid Edge 2019. The assembly level tubes are now supported as part of an adjustable assembly or part workflow. The adjustable tubes in conjunction with the key point curve command with fixed length settings can be used to create flexible hoses whose length need to be maintained. Uh, also adjustable tubes geometry exists in the assembly in which they are made adjustable. The adjustable tube path can be replaced by a new path at the top level assembly. Adjustable tubes participate also in various downstream operations, just like regular tubes such as physical properties, reports, etc. Now tube creation itself has not changed, but there are two new options to create adjustable tubes. Option one is through the Solid Edge Options Assembly tab. You can set the adjustable options to reduce the number of steps. With the setting, placing the tube assembly in a higher level assembly will automatically place it as adjustable tube. Option two is to place the tube assembly in a higher level assembly, then convert that tube assembly to an adjustable assembly, then convert the tube occurrence in the adjustable assembly to an adjustable part using the adjustable part option. This will create a copy of the original tube path in the top level assembly, which can then be modified to reflect the shape that is required. A new route command has been added to the express route environment as well. This can be used to route an existing key point curve through fittings that a tube will pass through. An advantage to using the adjustable tubes is they are now able to be represented as a single line item in a bomb. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. In this example, we're going to take a look at the adjustable tubes option inside of Solid Edge 2019. So we're going to open up an assembly here that already has some adjustable tubes placed inside of it, and we want to go ahead and route a new tube uh, as well. So we can see, again, some of the existing tubes already created. So what we're going to do is go into the express route environment and create a, uh, a new tube here. So when we're inside of the express route environment, we can run the key point curve command. We're going to route between a couple points here. We can simply hit F on the keyboard and that'll flip the direction the curve goes in case it comes out of the key point the wrong direction. We grab our other key point and go ahead and place that. Now what I'm going to do is go over to the parts library and we're going to drag in one of the existing adjustable uh, components here, the adjustable tube. And we're not going to constrain it, but what we're going to do is go in and actually edit it and edit the path of it that it's following. I'm going to deselect the existing path and we're going to select the key point curve that we drew inside of our express route environment here. And just like that, you can see the adjustable tube snaps onto it. We'll also use the new route command to route that tube through this mount point here in the assembly. And there we go. 
Now let's go ahead and then try to create a, uh, a drawing of this assembly as well. And we want to pull down a parts list inside of that drawing so we can get the length of all of the tubes. So we'll create a new drawing of the active assembly. And we'll just come in here into the drawing environment and place a view. Maybe we want to shade that in a little bit so we can see the color of the tubes. Place that. And I've got a parts list already set up that has some of the cut lengths uh, applied to it. So I'll just grab that and place our table. And if we zoom in, we can see the different cut, cut length. Um, now, I didn't fix the constraint of that last tube, but obviously we can see all the other ones grouped together. Quantity added up to five, and there we go. So really quick and easy to go in and create some adjustable tubes here now in Solid Edge 2019. A new Auto Simplify command has been added to Solid Edge as well. The Auto Simplify, in conjunction with various other commands in the simplified environment, like the enclosure command can now be used to quickly simplify multiple assembly occurrences to create an approximate simplified assembly representation. The auto simplify provides an option to simplify input reference bodies to remove features using an algorithm developed in-house and proprietary to Siemens. So after entering into the assembly simplify model environment and selecting model as a simplification method, the new auto simplify command can be found. In case one of the reference bodies cannot be simplified, it'll be used uh, as is with no simplification in the creation of the final body, and that'll be depicted in the Pathfinder with a gray arrow next to it. It's not a failure, but it's just simply a warning that one or more of the bodies was not simplified, and we can see an example of that below. Let's take a look at how this command works inside of Solid Edge. In this example, we're going to take a look at the new auto simplify options in Solid Edge 2019. So here we have uh, an assembly. And what we're going to do is just take a look inside of it to begin with. So we'll use the set planes or clipping plane command to actually clip inside of this and show you what the internals of the assembly looks like. So if we start to kind of come back through that, we can see the different components. We can see it's hollow inside of some of it. And what we want to do is simplify this and remove all of those internal voids and make this one solid part geometry so that we can send this out uh, to other customers potentially without sending any proprietary information. So if we switch into the simplify mode and go into the model option, we can then run the auto simplify command. When we run the command, what we're going to do is select all the components that we want to simplify and accept it. And this will simplify it down into one body, but it is not removing any of the internal voids. So it will be a single part file, but if we turn back on the clipping plane, we can see inside of it, and it has not cut, or excuse me, removed any of the voids on the inside of the model. But if we remove the features by hitting the option on the command bar, now it is a solid model. You can see it fills in the entire object, the entire assembly, into one solid model. So that's really awesome. This can then be saved out to a separate part file uh, and again, sent to potential customers, things like that, where you don't want to send the extra information. So to save that out, we can right click on the simplified assembly, do a save as, give this a name, and save it out somewhere. I'm just going to call it simplified. And if we open up that simplified assembly, we can see it's just a part copy, uh, one solid model. So some really cool options here with that auto simplify command inside of uh, Solid Edge 2019. New in the drafting environment is the option to define a brake axis for a broken view. So this can be used to change the orientation of the brake lines. This can be set for the broken view command by using two key points or by selecting a linear entity. And a dotted line will then appear to denote the angle of the brake axis. So we can see here in the top picture, the brake line was defined uh, along the bottom edge of the view. And then once we apply that broken view, we can see the revol resultant view here in the bottom picture. So this was another big enhancement that we've had for a long time. You can now create a brake axis for a broken view. So that's it for uh, what's new in Solid Edge 2019. In the next video, we'll take a look at some of the other enhancements, including the new Solid Edge Electrical. Uh, thanks again for your time, and I hope you have a good day. ProLim PLM.